blessings and welcome to your program Jeremiah 2911 with your host Reverend Dexel Peltzer and myself Dr. Marisol Amen. Peltzer. Blessings to you. Amen. God bless you. Today's topic is about one of my favorite people. I have three favorite people Dexter. <laughs> the Father, the Son, and the, and the Holy, Holy Ghost. Spirit. Amen. And the Holy Spirit. And today's program deals with talks about the character of the Holy Spirit and why it's important that the Holy Spirit abides in our lives. And the topic is why do we need to be led by the Holy Spirit? In Romans 8, 14, it says that those the ones that are sons and daughters of God are those that are led by the Spirit. So this is very important because it's related to our salvation and it's related for us to walk in victory because the Holy Spirit was sent to be our comforter, the paraclete, a helper. So this is going to be a powerful program today. So just pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you would just anoint the program, Amen. the words. We just welcome Holy Spirit to just take over in this teaching. And we thank you, Father, that the people will hear the word and there will be a rema word to them, that it will Amen. come alive in their lives and that it will change, it will pierce their hearts, Lord, and that Amen. they will begin to walk in this, Father, all of us, and that we will know and follow Jesus in the power of the resurrection. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Wow, so... Brothers and sisters, we love you, and uh, I don't know, this is like such an, oh, there's the Spirit, such yes. an important topic that we're going to honor the Holy Spirit today. Stay with us, we're going to pray prayers of activation, the Spirit just fell on me again. The Father, the Son, they talk about the Holy Spirit in amazing ways, and the blessings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so, really, we're even going to see the evidence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but most importantly, the truth that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons and daughters of God. And that this is not something we just put aside and say, well, the Spirit's not active anymore after the apostolic age, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. This is critical even to our salvation as we're going to see in the Word of God. I think you're going to be astonished by the Word of God, what it actually says. And remember, all judgment will be done by the Word of God. So this is important that we are able today to understand, to recognize, and to know that we are being led by the Spirit in our lives. And therefore, as we're going to see, we're not even under the law when we're led by the Spirit. But when we're not led by the Spirit, we're under the law. And I don't know about you, but Marisol, how many people fall short of the glory of God and salvation trying to follow the law? Everyone. Everyone. All including have us. sinned and All fallen of short of the glory of God. So I am not. I'm just telling you. I don't want, want to be judged by the law. The law is in place, we're going to see in the scriptures, to judge the unbelievers. I don't want to be before the great white throne, judgment of God, which is for unbelievers, and being judged by the law against my sins I do in my body. I, I, forget it. Everyone will fail. I must be under grace. I must be under the new covenant. I must be led by the Spirit as part of that. This is not optional. And we're going to see this in the scriptures. Ooh. So please, Lord, just transform us. Anything, any lies or deceits taught to us from the past that are not in accordance with thy word and thy truth, we cast them away as far as the east is from the west. We ask you right now to write these truths onto our minds and hearts. Father God Almighty, in Jesus' name. All right. A lot of scriptures, really important that we search the scriptures and find the truth. And then when we know the truth, by the truth we'll be set free. And set free also means saved. Romans 8, 14, Marisol started with it. So let's start with it again. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. You're going to perish. You're going to go to hell. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Really important. In order for sin to have no dominion, Romans, 6, 14, Romans chapter 6, for sin to have no dominion over you, we must be led by the Spirit. Without being led by the Spirit, our flesh will always win out. Period. In fact, that's evidence right there. If we have areas of our life where our flesh is dominant and we have sinful areas of our life, then we know 
we are not being led by the spirit we are controlled by our flesh and by the demonic principalities that then have authority with the open door from our sin remember sin is crouching at your door that spirits of darkness that may then control us in ways we can't even imagine so verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god that's powerful and wait till you see the rest of the scriptures that talk about being led by the spirit turn to romans 8 9 just before that really important that we understand this but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he is not his so i need to be filled by the spirit i need to be sealed by the spirit i need to be led by the spirit i'm not taking chances with my salvation Ah, uh -uh. we're going to see in moments that <laughs> it goes really deep with regard to what i just said i need to be baptized with the spirit filled by the spirit led by the spirit and i need to crucify my flesh end of the conversation you will see this by the end of this teaching that's the hard truth of the word of god now galatians 5 16. um no i'm actually going to go a little bit back romans 8 5. let's stay in romans for a second romans 8 5. for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit on the things of the spirit or the kingdom of god remember seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things on earth that you need will be added unto you it is really important again that we understand this if we live according to the flesh our minds will be on the things of the flesh the demonic realm will have power over us to keep us in those sins and goodness gracious we better run to the cross and to jesus christ quickly and sin will have no dominion over us when we surrender our lives to the lord the spirit fills us and seals us and then sanctifies us this is what the word says in romans 6 through 8 read about it it's all about our sanctification so that the word says sin will have no dominion over you in any year of your life but it's through being led by the spirit we just read that in romans 8 13. so if i want victory over sin isn't that a million reasons in any of our lives for us to be led by the spirit isn't that a reason enough let alone all the other things we're going to go into I think it is okay Galatians 5 16 Wow this is gonna get really even deeper huh. Paul's teaching he says I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh hmm. for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish here it is this scripture is scary and powerful but if if you are led by the spirit remember then you're a son and daughter of god you are not under the law whoa i'm sorry marisol but do i want to be under grace the new covenant or under the law we want to be under grace under the new covenant because it's much better okay so we just saw it to be saved in sons and daughters of god i must be led by the spirit mm -hmm. and if i'm led by the spirit i'm not under the law and if i'm under the law what's going to judge me the law the law and all have sin and fallen short mm. And you can't it, even fulfill the law, Dexter, fully. No one can, sweetie. No, because there's no temple. And but we can have victory over the sin through the supernatural power, sanctifying power, including self-control and all the fruit of the Spirit that controls our lives, the captain of our lives. We can have victory over any and all sin. We can read Roman, I mean, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. It talks about sodomy, homosexuality, fornication, liars, all the sins that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then Paul amazingly says, you formerly were these things, but no longer. They had victory, and the word says, in 1 Corinthians 6, 11, your victory was through the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by being led by the Spirit. We must get this. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. <sighs> must not be under the law. Because look what happens if you're under the law verse 19 now the works of the flesh 
for which the law is then ordained to control your destiny, are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, and heresies, envy, murders, though that includes those who hate your brothers and, have not, and sisters and have not forgiven them, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things, remember sin will have no dominion over you, when you're what? <laughs> in Christ, and the Spirit is in control to sanctify you. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look and listen to this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. You are led by your flesh and the demonic realm. You're under the law. And you are in trouble as well as I was as a prodigal son. You are led by the Spirit. You will have victory over every sinful dominion over your life. And you will walk in the will of the Father for your life that was preordained. Remember Psalm 139? There are books uh, written of every day of your life of what you were to accomplish for the Lord. You will fulfill your gifts and call, and you will fulfill what you're called for. And great will be your rewards in heaven. And by the way, Jesus Christ will receive the reward of the suffering through the cross in our lives. Amen. And many will be saved. Wow. <clears throat> Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Do you, do you see what Paul's doing? He's teaching us a new lifestyle of no longer, with our own eyes, thinking what man thinks is right in his own eyes, which the Word says is not of God. I no longer follow my own path, what I think is right. I die to myself. Crucify my own desires for my own life. I surrender unto the Lord as Lord, King of my life. And then he fills me with the Holy Spirit to lead me, whose voice I can hear. And huh, I get to walk in step with the Spirit every day of my life. So when he tells you to stop for the one, you're walking your dog, you're out of the grocery store, he tells you there's someone who needs prayer. There's someone who needs a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. You have that unction inside of you. The Spirit leads you. You go over there and you obey. And then the living waters pour out. Against such, there is no law. You are not under the law. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty powerful. I'm led by the Spirit. I'm not under the law. <clears throat> Proverbs 3.5. I, I want you to see, this is like the secret. I, I mean, when you actually do Proverbs 3.5, you will be the bride of Christ. You will be led by the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can't wait to fill those who are willing to surrender their lives to the Lordship of God, to the Lordship of Christ. The Holy Spirit can't wait to fill us, can't wait to lead us. We have to understand, this is not something that he doesn't desire to do. Read the story of Cornelius, the first Gentile family being saved. Read that story. It says the Spirit fell on them before they even got to confess their faith. Because the Lord saw their hearts. The Spirit was so excited, he fell on them. And they all released the gifts of the Spirit immediately. Not only Cornelius, but all his friends and his family that he invited over to hear the gospel from Peter. <sighs> That's how excited the Holy Spirit is to fill us. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Give your life to him. And lean not on your own understanding, especially when it comes to the supernatural things of believing in the Spirit that is real and that he will fill you and he will lead you. Lean not on your own understanding. Even what we learned in the past, sometimes in the main denominational churches, don't, don't lean on that. Lean on the truth of the God, God's word. Test everything according to the word. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Wow. That includes today, more than anything, what we're learning is learn to acknowledge 
that the Spirit is the leader of your life. Learn to have fellowship with the Spirit, hear His voice, feel His promptings, and respond in obedience to them. That's the way, I'm telling you, the Spirit just fell on me, that you acknowledge Him, and then what happens? The Spirit leads your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. <laughs> so again, how can you do that? By being led by the Spirit and sanctified by the Spirit. Giving him full reign and authority for every area of our lives. All right, I'm going to hit it hard again. Huh. Why do we not want to be under the law? Remember, those who are led by the Spirit are not under the law. So those who are not led by the Spirit are under the law. Let's just read what this means. The truth. You know what? I'm going to start with uh, John 12:48. This is the truth of how we're judged. Jesus Christ himself says this. He who rejects me, and that includes the truth of the word of God, which says to be led by the Spirit. Because believe me, if you reject any part of the Trinity, we're rejecting God. He who rejects me and does not receive my words, and he just told us, you'll receive power on high, right? He tells the disciples, stay in Jerusalem, in the upper room they stayed. You'll receive power on high. And as we know before that, none of them had victory. Afterwards, Peter, the very one who denied Christ three times, was on fire for the Lord, and 3,000 people got saved. Be why? Because he was led by the Spirit. And all the miracle signs and wonders broke out among the apostles and the disciples. Why? Because they were led by the Spirit. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. And well, I, I really need to read verse 47 first. If anyone hears my words and does not believe, like also in the Holy Spirit, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Really important. But listen to what he now says in verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Marisol, what is one of the names of Jesus Christ? The word of God. God. Revelation chapter 19. And what does John and 1 John say? Jesus is the word made flesh who dwelt among us. Jesus is the word of God. So we're judged by the word of God. So if 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 11, if Galatians 5, 19 said, if you practice these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God because you're being led by your flesh, not by the spirit, and you're under the law, oh, now it all comes together, then I'm going to be judged. I don't want that. Let's see this truth in 1 Timothy 1, 9. And remember this, we've taught a lot on this, but I want you to understand. Paul teaches about this in Romans and Timothy, three different places. He teaches about the purpose of the law. So never forget it. And I believe also in Galatians. Never forget, he teaches very carefully what the purpose of the law is. Listen. Knowing this, <clears throat> that the law is not made for a righteous person. Marisol, who we, who's the scriptures just defined as a righteous person, the person led by the Spirit? Right. Because you're then not under the law. Listen. But for the lawless and insubordinate, oh, the ones who are practicing the fruits of the flesh, right? Which will not inherit the kingdom of God. You're seeing this come together. It is not made for a righteous person, and I could add, led by the Spirit, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, start to see the same list as Galatians, fruit of the flesh, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Wow, that's who the law is for. So again, Marisol, the, the as a believer, I am under the new covenant. I am to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The blood of the Lamb washes me clean of all my sins as far as the east is from the west. Why do I want to go back and be under the law? By dishonoring the Holy Spirit. 
so that I am not sanctified and set free so sin has no dominion over me. Why would I want to do that? I'm not going to tempt the judgment, which is by the word of God. I must be led by the Spirit to not be under the law. There is no option here. There's no middle ground. Yes. And the law also helps us to realize that we need Jesus as our Savior. Well, that's the it purpose of the law. Yes, thank you. Our sin. Yeah, earlier in Galatians and in Romans, it tells you the purpose of the law also is so that we are convicted, because remember the Holy Spirit's ministry is to convict us of our sin, convict the world of its sin, convict us so we run to Jesus Christ because we desperately need a Savior to wash us clean of the guilt of that sin before a holy God. That's what the word says. Read it in Galatians and Romans. It says that's the purpose of the law, to bring us to Christ. But then it says, so you're under a tutor, it says, to bring you to Christ. But then once you are Christ, you're no longer under the law, but under grace, if you're led by the Spirit. You've you got to get this. Read these scriptures, please. Don't take my word for it. Read them. This is a matter of life and death. This is a matter of honoring the Trinity or not honoring the Trinity of God. Romans 8, 3 and 4. Let's go back to Romans. Romans has so much to say about this. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. In other words, no one in their own strength in the flesh could obey the law. We have already ascertained that. Read Romans 1 and 2. It tells you that. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Now listen to this. That's why we need to be under grace. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. Yes. Oh, this is powerful. In us, doesn't say who just believe. Who? Do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Oh my goodness. I'm washed clean by the blood of the lamb because I'm led by the spirit. I do not walk according to flesh. I crucify my flesh, Romans chapter 6. I, and then, therefore, I'm filled with the Spirit. The Spirit takes those areas by the supernatural power of God, washes it, even says in Hebrews 9, 14 and 10, 22, washes my conscience clean of all those dead acts so I can serve the Lord with a clear conscience. It's part of why I also pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do, do you see it? The righteous requirements of the law are fulfilled. Not just because I confess Jesus Christ. No, that's not what it says. But I walk in step led by the Spirit. That's why this goes into Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit are their sons and daughters of God. Wow. I do not want to be under the law. The law is fulfilled in Christ when I'm led by the Spirit. I, I'm sorry, but we've got to get this. This is so important. Okay, Romans 6.14. I've been quoting this, but I want you to, to hear it. Listen to the grace of God when I'm led by the Spirit, what it does. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Whoa, there it is again. Hmm. And this goes into... I'm sorry, I've got to read it. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Oh my goodness. There it is again. There's no condemnation. Why? Because I'm being led by the Spirit. Please, get this. I cannot be under the law. I will go to hell. None of us are any different. None of us can fulfill the law. That's what the word of God says. And Jesus Christ himself said, all judgment will be in accordance with the word of God. Yes. And also, Dexter, when we add all these requisites, all these things that we must do, um, you know, we have to do this and we have to do that, we're in a subtle way saying that the sacrifice of Christ was, was not, not enough. enough. Right. And, 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 and that's not good. 
Um, because the scripture clearly says there's only one way to heaven, and it's to Christ Jesus. And the one that brings you to conviction is the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to do all these steps and all these religious things. Uh, to earn the grace of God. God. Oh, my goodness. Right. So you Come just, on, people. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you need to understand or that. Or to get more of his grace. Come on. Right. That's saying Jesus didn't do enough. That's why Paul says, why do you honor a certain day of the week and these festivals and all that? Why are you still bound by the, the phases of the moon and all these things that drive the festivals? Why are you driven by that? You're afraid from that. Don't be driven by that. That's why he wrote the book of Galatians to not go back under the law. And that's Because he actually mean. says, if you go back under the law, you are damning yourselves. It's in Galatians. And that's why they had the Jerusalem Council, Dexter. Remember? Mm -hmm. Because Paul is saying they're free. They're not bound to this. That's Amen? right. So please but, understand But, but understand, that. we do obey the law of Christ. Yes. Don't, don't get me wrong. The law of Christ is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the one that says to love your enemies, bless your enemies, forgive those who hurt you and persecute you. You're to suffer for me. Take up your cross. I'm telling you, the law of Christ is amazingly more powerful in the power even of love that it transmits into this world to how we can be a light than ever the Torah could have been, the old law. All right. Galatians 5, 1 through 4. This is the book written because they wanted to go back under the law. Paul says to them, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. He's talking this whole chapter about going back under the law. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circ circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, separated from Christ. That's what that means. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. But we, through this spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Do you see the contrast? He goes right back, by the spirit, led by the spirit, walking in step by the spirit. All these things, back to the spirit, back to the new covenant. The grace of God. This is just another aspect of what Marisol is saying. I do not want to be under the law either of my own free will to go back under the law or because I'm not led by the Spirit. And I refuse to believe that the working of the Spirit is even active in the church today. I actually refuse to believe it. Right there, I, I don't even want to say what's happening. Talk about dishonoring the Trinity. And the very gift that Christ said, it is better for you that I go to the Father so that I can send the gift of the Holy Spirit. It will be better that you are led by the Spirit than I still walked with you. Jesus Christ has still said, said that. So I'm sorry, he's going to go up into heaven and leave us helpless to the wiles of the devil to destroy us? Come on. What kind of loving father is that? No, he gave us something better, the Holy Spirit, to fill all of us. The very third person of the Trinity to live inside of us and abide in us. Christ in me, the hope of glory. As the word says, by the spirit of Christ living in me. Wow, what a gift. I will not dishonor that gift. All my life I did not know the spirit. You know the story. Till late in my life I was baptized. And I have had the peace and joy of God ever since. And Marisol can testify to that. I will not try to go my way on this earth and the flesh doing the best I can to obey these moral rules. Oh my goodness, I'll fall on my face every time as I did as a prodigal son. You will never have victory over sin. Sin will have dominion over you and I if we live according to our flesh and our own strength trying to do the best we can. No. There's a supernatural power of God that will sanctify me and give me the supernatural grace of self-control, one of the fruits of the Spirit, so that sin will have no dominion over me. That's what I need. All right. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. This is the truth, and this will come forth in the judgment. For he who sows to his flesh, we've just been reading about that, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Wow, if I'm 
dishonoring Holy Spirit. I don't even believe, Marisol, that he fills me and leads me. Now I can hear his voice. Amen. Oh my goodness, I'm not sowing to the Spirit. I'm sowing to my flesh and my own strength, which the Word just said I'll fail. But if I pursue the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I will not, and you know this, Marisol, because you knew me at that time, before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I pursued it with a zeal until I was finally baptized. Will we sow to the Spirit and reap everlasting life? All these scriptures say the same thing. I'm not reading a scripture out of context. You notice that? And there is no scripture that's contrary to these. These scriptures all say the same thing. I must be led by the Spirit. All right. Wow, this is one of my favorite scriptures. What are the, I'm going to switch course here for a second. What are the incredible blessings that Jesus Christ said himself, it's better for you that I go to the Father so I can send you the gift of the Holy Spirit. What are just some of just many, many blessings of being led by the Spirit? Let's, let's read this. And I want to read Ezekiel 36, 26. Go to the Old Testament, a prophetic word that speaks. I love this prophetic word, Marisol. It actually gives you the new covenant, what happens. So those of you who don't think you need this, listen to these words carefully. And then you tell me you don't need this to obey God. I'm not going to. Ezekiel 36, 26. Talking about the new covenant, prophetically. I love this. God's speaking. I... Wow, I'm going to start with verse 25. I will, then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Listen to this. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. We must understand in the Old Testament, the spirit did not abide in a person. He fell on them. Read it. Huge difference. In the New Covenant, the Spirit abides inside of us. That's why our bodies are the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of Holiness. So you must understand, this is a prophetic vision of the New Covenant in Christ. Listen to this. Listen to the benefits of being led by the Spirit. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Well, I think I need that to obey God, don't you? And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. And then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all uncleanness. We just read these scriptures. All of these are parallel to the blessings of the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant. These are all things I desperately needed and I, am, I thank God for to sanctify me, to cleanse me, to wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb, to make all things new, to have a rebirth of water and of spirit and have my old man, my Adamic nature die on the cross with Christ. This is the new birth that Jesus talks about to Nicodemus. This is it. This is what happens. Now, is that not glorious? You see how it's linked to the Holy Spirit all throughout that? Without the Spirit, there is none of that. The new covenant and sanctification in an amazing scripture brought together in one. All right. Romans 8, 15 and 16. Why do we keep going back to Romans? Uh, because Paul taught about this. Romans 8. 8, 15, 16, more than any other book. Listen to this blessing of being led by the Spirit and filled by the Spirit and walking in step with the Spirit. For you did not receive the spirit of a bondage again to fear. No more fear. Hallelujah. But you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with my spirit inside of me that we are children 
of God. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him that he, we may also be glorified together. Oh my goodness. What a blessing. No more fear. No more fear of my eternal destination. I will know it because the Spirit will witness to me. And not only that, I will now recognize God under the law, which brings me to Christ. It's the fear of God that makes me repent and need Jesus Christ. And then that fear gets transformed into a reverential fear, and then that gets transformed, ha, glory be to God, into Abba, loving Father. In the Middle East, what a child calls their daddy, Abba, Father. The same words are used today in the Middle East, Abba, Father. Huh. Do you see, understand? Why, why do I want to be under the law where 3,000 died on Mount Sinai when the power of God fell versus grace when 3,000 got saved on the day of Pentecost? Why? Huh. Why is all this happening? Come on. Who's, whose voice am I hearing? Whose confirmation am I feeling? The Holy Spirit's. He will witness to me, to my own spirit. Do you, do you see the blessings and benefit if I surrender my life to Jesus Christ and I ask to be filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit? And we'll go to that scripture in a moment in Luke 11. Wow. All right. <laughs> That's powerful. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. I can never tire of the word of God in this area. It is amazing how the Lord teaches us the truth. If... We are wanting to find it. Because remember, by the truth we will be set free. Even of the lies and deceits we've been taught. First Thessalonians 5.23. I want to say something. Yes. It's so important that you read the Bible to find the truth versus reading the Bible to support your point. Your pre-held you. beliefs. Exactly, yes. Marisol. So important, I'm going to say it again. It is important that you read the Bible to find the truth. And transform you. And transform you and not to support what you already believe. That's right. Because uh, I'm telling you, I have learned, I had preconceived notions of many things. And when the Spirit led me, those were changed dramatically. Including the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I was taught completely opposite, that that had died in the apostolic age and was not active. Never taught from the pulpit when I went to church as a child. All right. Wow, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. This is important that we know that this work of sanctification, and it's called the spirit of sanctification, just so you know who's doing this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So I must. <laughs> He's called the spirit of sanctification. I must allow that spirit to fill me and control my life. I must be led by the spirit in every area of my life. And look what it says in number 19, the verse, do not put out the spirit fire. Do not quench. And it also says, do not grieve the Spirit in another verse. Oh my, why does the Lord protect the Spirit so that the only unforgivable sin is called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit when you attribute the works of the Spirit and someone else to the works of Satan as they did to Jesus Christ? And they said he did those acts by Bezalel, the devil. And Jesus taught right then. You know what? He said, any blasphemy against me will be forgiven if you ask but against the spirit no why does the father and the son protect the spirit like that i wonder why did they honor the spirit that way i wonder if we shouldn't have that same heart of honoring the holy spirit in fact i know today absolutely 100 percent yes all right second timothy 1 7. What are the blessings, Marisol, of being led by the Spirit? And we're just giving you a glimpse. 2 Timothy 1.7. 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear. Oh, remember, we just read. Mm-hmm. We're not, we have the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father, not the spirit of fear anymore. Whoa! Why? Because I'm led by the spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Um, yeah, I think we all need that, always. Luke 12, 12. Ah, Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Luke 12, 12. In verse 11, it says, you know what? You're going to be persecuted. You're going to suffer my sake. You you may even have to appear before governmental authorities on my behalf because you're being persecuted. And listen to what he says. In verse 11, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. So you're being persecuted, you're being brought before people for the name of Christ. He says, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. Wow. So if I'm ever being persecuted or suffering, or even being accused of breaking any laws or anything else, who can I trust in that hour before I have to appear before the governmental authorities? If I'm led by the Spirit, I can know the Spirit will take care of me. Wow, that's pretty cool, I would say, and that's pretty necessary. And Dexter number 18 says, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but Hmm. anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. I know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Don't... And please, I'm going to give a word of warning. The Lord gave to me in the beginning as a prodigal son when I was returning. And I almost, I was coming close to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And boy, did a hammer come down. And I am so thankful for the rebuke of the Lord. And I repented immediately. Because there was this minister that I thought his acts were not of the Spirit, that they they were fake. And boy, did the Lord come and rebuke me. Talk about feeling the presence of God, and I repented. And I learned why later on. I'm going to say this very carefully, because this was true of me. If you see works of the Holy Spirit, and you're not sure about them yet, first pray and ask the Lord, of course, and be led by the Spirit. But I am telling you, all because you are not doing those same things yet, do not call them false. If you do not have the leading and discernment of the Spirit to say that. Be very careful with blaspheming what could be the very creative miracles God is doing through another person, all because you're not doing the same things. Sometimes that's, quite frankly, just jealousy or envy. Please, give the Lord room to teach you and give the room, Lord room to have the, have the very gifts and calling that he has for you, to, that are irrevocable to flow through you, and be content with those always, and be faithful to utilizing those gifts as he calls you. <laughs> the word says we do not all have the same gifts, and we do not have all the same calling. So I do not expect the same miracle signs and wonders to flow through any of us, the same words of knowledge, the same prophecy, same words of wisdom, the same healing, all these things. It says the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 distributes those gifts among the body as is pleasing to him. He's the captain of the ship. Oh, what was that, Dex? He's the captain of the ship. He distributes the gifts. I bet you he distributes to those who honor the Holy Spirit and are willing to say, yes, Lord, use me. Oh, So I need to be led by the Spirit. I bet you we do. I need to honor the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and when he calls me to minister or give a word of knowledge, I need to boldness go do it, and then the living waters come out of me. Why? Because of the captain of the ship, the Holy Spirit, decides whom and when the spiritual gifts flow. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He's the captain by bar none. So if you want a reason to be led by the Spirit, It's so that the supernatural power of God is released on this earth and Jesus Christ receives the glory, honor, and praise. Many run to him for salvation. Many are set free. Captives, prisoners are all set free by the power of God. But again, I can't do that if I dishonor the Holy Spirit and I'm not led by him. It's not going to minister gifts to people who don't honor him. 
and who say no. Galatians 6 8. We've said this, but I want to repeat it. I don't think I can say this enough. How our, our eternal life is linked to this. Galatians 6 8. Oh, I already read it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I will read it again. He who sows to the flesh will the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will the spirit reap everlasting life. Yeah, I remember. I wanted to read that again just so that we understand. We're talking about eternal life. I will be led by the spirit. All right. John 16, 13. How much time do we have, sweetie? Um, ten minutes. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. More. And, Lord, right now, illuminate our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits, and the truth within us. And if there is any way in which we are not living these truths, I ask you to shine your light on it and bring us to repentance. Yes and to seek the baptism of the Holy Spirit and to be led by him all the days of our life in Jesus' name. Let not these things be hidden from our own eyes or our own heart, our own soul, or our own spirit, Lord. I ask you to illuminate these truths in Jesus' name. John 16, 13. Beautiful, amazing blessings of being led by the Spirit. However, when he, this Spirit of truth, has come, this is Jesus talking about why it's better that he goes up to the Father, he will guide you into all truth. Yes. Oh, he will guide you into all truth. Whoa, that's, remember, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. That's even the power which sanctifies you. Read Hebrews 4.12. The word and the Spirit linked together to be one, so the word is rhema and living and active in you, sharper than a two-edged sword, able to pierce the division of your soul and spirit, able even to judge the thoughts and intentions of our heart. Why? Because it's activated by the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. Oh, he's leading again, isn't he? Uh-huh. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you even of things to come. Listen to this, the glorious ministry of the Holy Spirit. He will glorify me, Jesus says. For he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Whoa, so if I'm led by the Spirit and I honor the Holy Spirit, I'll hear his voice and I'll even know which way to go, what to do, when to minister, when not to, when to be silent, when to speak. Wow. Huh. Self-control. The gifts of the Spirit flowing through me like living waters. Wow. We even hit that part of being led by the Spirit, the glory of God flowing through us Veer vessels, vessels of clay so that only he can receive the glory. Whoa. <laughs> so the power of God is manifest on this earth. Light overcomes darkness. Whoa. Why? By the power of God inside of me. Whom I release by complete surrender to his lordship. Wow. That's not powerful. I don't know what is. Isaiah 30, 21. Just going to read this. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Yeah, I need to hear to stay in God's perfect will. We pray those prayers. We will continue to pray those prayers. I must not veer to the left or the right. And the way I stay in God's perfect will is being, being led by the Spirit and hearing his voice. <clears throat> Proverbs twenty twenty seven. Wow, I love these scriptures. They never end, Marisol. I, mm -hmm. I won't even get through all these scriptures. There's so many. Praise the Lord for the word of God. Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of a man is a lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. I need the Lord to illuminate my spirit, and he does it by how? By the spirit. You, you must understand, I must have any sinful nature inside of me, which is why we pray Psalm 139, 23, and 24, illuminated so that I know and can be led by the spirit of repentance to repent of it and be set free of it. I must not hide my sins from God or from fellow man. I'll be destroyed. Why? Because sinners crouching at my door will have dominion over me. I must have the spirit having dominion over my spirit and my soul, not the devil. 
Those who live according to the flesh are destroyed. We already read that. All right. 1 Peter 1, 2. I, I want to make sure you get this. The sanctification, this is so critical that we get this. If I do not honor the Holy Spirit and let him into every area of my life, and I do not illuminate every area of my life, I hide nothing from God, uh, I'm in trouble. But look what happens when you do. 1 Peter 1, 2. I love this. He's talking to the elect. He says, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Holy Spirit. For what? For obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. Oh my goodness, Paul's like giving a whole sermon in this. I'm sorry, Peter is. Do, do, do you see that? We're sanctified by the Holy Spirit for obedience, and then the blood of the Lamb washes us clean of our guilt so we can stand before the Father as righteous in Christ by the blood of the Lamb, my faith in Him. But the sanctification of the Spirit is all linked in there because I can't obey God unless I'm being led by the Spirit and sanctified by the Spirit. He has, must have complete authority over every area of my life. So there it is. Who sanctifies us? Hmm. Sanctification of the Spirit. Do I need to be led and sanctified? Whoa. Do I want to be practicing those sins of the flesh and be condemned to hell? They shall not, those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Or do I want to be set free by the power of God? I want to be set free. Ephesians 6, 6, 6, 17, it tells us to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and what first? Pierce myself. I'm not trying to be vulgar, but seriously. Always when I read the Word of God, I look at it, as Marisol said, not to confirm that I'm good, I'm safe, I'm happy, tickle my ears. No, it's all about transforming me until I am just like Christ. Paul said he never... Was, he didn't reach it yet. He said, I haven't attained to it yet. And this is Paul. I think we need this work in us. What is the sword of the Spirit? The Word of God. All right. Marisol, how do we receive the Spirit? It's so important. We're going to pray for this. Incredible surrender to the Spirit and being filled by the Spirit and the Lordship of the Spirit over our lives. But I want you to understand this is scriptural. Acts 2, 38. Oh, I love this. I'm going to go to verse 37. This is the famous sermon of Peter when 3,000 get saved, unlike Mount Sinai when 3,000 perish. Listen to this. It says, so Peter just did an amazing sermon to the people of Israel, to people of many nations and tongues. Listen to what they say. Now, when they heard this, so now, let me ask you something. The same Peter who denied Christ and ran away, Right? Three times, Marisol? Mm -hmm. It's the same Peter in boldness, now through the anointed power of the Word of God, anointed by the Spirit, 3,000 get saved. You tell me which, which part is representing the power of the Spirit. We have two minutes. 3,000 being saved. Mm -hmm. It says they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off. He's talking even to us today. As many as the Lord our God will call. Marisol, last scripture, and then we're going to pray. Luke eleven thirteen. This is not hard, asking for the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is what I prayed. Luke eleven thirteen. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Wow. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. while I repent, I'm not honoring you, Holy Spirit, the way I should, to be led by you in every area of my life, including my sanctification. I ask for forgiveness of those sins, Father, in the name of Jesus, and also of all the generations that have gone before me in the name of Jesus. I choose now in my life to be, for you, Jesus, to be not only my Savior, but Lord of my life. And by that, I ask you to be Lord of my life by being led by the Spirit all the days of my life. I surrender everything to you, Father, for this. In the precious name of Jesus, I hold nothing back. 
And now, Lord, I confess to you, in accordance with Luke 11, 13, that I cannot do this in my own strength, and what is right in my own eyes, I always fail. And I will not, I do not desire to be under the law, Lord. I know the consequences of that. Forgive me for ever wanting to be under the law in any area of my life. Now I ask you, Lord, to be under the grace and the new covenant in the Lamb of God. So I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit, and now I surrender. I want to know you, Holy Spirit. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to hear your voice. I surrender to be led by you in every area of my life, all the days of my life. And I ask for your power to be perfected in my weakness. Even if in any area of my life I am falling short, I ask you to quickly convict me, Holy Spirit, yes. and lead me in the way everlasting, free of that sin in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm asking this of my own free will, even as you promised David with Solomon, that you would quickly discipline him so, and you would never take your spirit from him. I ask for that same promise of grace, Lord, that you will quickly discipline me in the name of Jesus Christ. Always Amen. lead me to repentance, Father, in Jesus' name. I surrender my life to this all the days of my life. And I can't wait to see now the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and your leading of me in the way everlasting into your perfect will, Lord. I ask for this over myself and my family line in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So remember, be led by the Spirit. Amen. This has been your program, Jeremiah 2911. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, ShalomShalom.org, and we'll see you next week. Blessings. Amen. Shalom. Shalom.